more progress over here, and then we can call it a day and a week as well. Um, all right, so you'll see that we have this mu, okay, in the normal expression, okay, we have this mu and sigma, those are the two um, parameters uh, in a normal um, model. So just like what we did before with the binomial, okay, we have n and p, okay, Remember in a binomial experiment, n is fixed. So it's never a parameter or anything, okay? P is the only parameter, even though we have, you know, parentheses. In parentheses, we have two, n and p, but only this one is the parameter because n is fixed. Uh, for the normal, um, you're gonna see that, well, if both mu and sigma are unknown, then we have two parameters, okay? And uh, we're gonna start with some simpler cases where we fix or we assume that one is known, I only need to work with the other. Uh, but nevertheless, it's important to recognize that and try to recall from before as well. When we only have P as the parameter, the Bayesian inference goes this way. We give P a prior, okay, whatever that is. We worked out the beta um, distribution case. And then we're gonna have our binomial data model. So that comes in our likelihood. And then eventually we can derive or calculate whichever way, like exact solution or simulation-based solution we can get the posterior distribution of, um, of P after we combine the prior and the likelihood. Okay. So for us, you will see that we're gonna do something very similar. Okay. Um, if, so let's just say mu is the only unknown parameter, and let's just say sigma is known, then my whole model, the normal, what I need to do is mu is the only unknown, I need to give him, or sorry, I need to give it a prior distribution. I'm gonna find out my likelihood given my data. And then with all that, um, by the way, in this case, it's gonna be a um, continuous version of the base, uh, base rule as well. So we're gonna see that, um, how to do that in practice. And then with that, eventually, we'll be able to arrive at a posterior distribution mu. And with that, we'll be able to do all kinds of summary of the posterior distribution for, for inference questions. Okay, so this is a preview, and I want to connect back to what we have seen already. And you will see that for certain situations, we are seeing general, like the similar general procedure. And the general procedure is like the three steps that I mentioned. And make sure that uh, you know the general procedure and then in specific cases, what we do exactly, okay? So I guess already talked about the recap. Uh, so uh, give, just pay attention that right now we're trying to work with uh, everything about the normal density um, or like the normal likelihood um, we're uh, like the situation they're working with. So instead of P, we're gonna work with either mu or sigma. I'm gonna show you both and um, how to go from there. So this is once again, sorry, the review and we have all of the results. So the normal, like I said, we have YI, IID of a normal mu sigma, okay? Uh, by the way, I think sometimes people write uh, normal mu and sigma um, or normal mu sigma squared. Um, really, people always use sigma to represent the standard deviation. So don't get confused like what is the variance or what is, so sigma is the standard deviation, sigma squared is the variance. Um, so sometimes people write mu sigma, sometimes mu sigma squared, but they're really talking about the same normal distribution. Okay, so could be a little bit confusing. Uh, I try to, I guess I will try to definitely be a little bit consistent. So we're just gonna use mu and sigma to represent the mean and the standard deviation. All right, so the data model or the sampling model, as we know, just like the expenditure, the log expenditure that we saw before, we're gonna give a normal um, to it. And then we're gonna have two parameters, like I said, mu and sigma. So the question is, how can we specify priors for them? Do we do like uh, same prior, like the, um, do we, like I, I guess say, because we have two parameters, how are we supposed to give priors for two parameters? So that's something new we're gonna learn. And then natural question is, do we, have conjugate priors for them. So we can also have, you know, like whatever the prior, let's just say um, a particular distribution I give from you, if it's conjugate, we know that the posterior distribution will also be the same family with different parameters and all that. So do that exist? And uh, does that exist? And if so, how can we, I guess, capitalize what we have learned already from the uh, proportion case to, to make the um, inference much simpler if we go that way? All right, so the prior distributions, I think that will be the most I can cover today um, is, so first of all, the data model, um, just to highlight it one more time, we're dealing with YI is IID normal, 
and uh, we have uh, mu and sigma, they're the two parameters. So if both are unknown, then our um, likelihood function, which we have written, first of all, is the joint of all of the observations, which will be our likelihood of mu and sigma. Okay. So to re refresh our memory a little bit, in the beta binomial case that we did before, we have our data, which is y, right? And that's the sampling model itself. And we rewrite it in terms of p, and we call it as a likelihood function. Okay. So we're doing something very similar here in equation two. We are um, writing out the joint density. So first of all, it's joint over here because you have n observation instead of only one observation in the binomial case. Here we have n different observations. And we assume that they're IID. So the joint density of the observations themselves, we can rewrite it into a likelihood function of mu and sigma. So also likelihood function, we always use L, right, to represent it. And likelihood function, as we know, is function about the unknown parameters. So that's why, um, well, we can rewrite the um, joint density of the observations uh, in terms of the likelihood function. So we are expressing the joint density as a function of mu and sigma. And we do that, as you know, just like in the uh, proportion case, because the Bayes rule, right, works with this unknown parameter P. We have a prior for P, we have a likelihood for P, so we're able to derive the posterior. And um, with that, we're gonna have um, the joint likelihood or the likelihood of the two parameters together. So natural question, and like I said, is well, yes, we have two parameters. So what well, are we supposed to do? If both are unknown, uh, what we actually need to do is what we call a joint prior distribution. So generically, I'm just using just as before. I have a pi to represent the prior distribution, and I need to have them for both the parameters. So I just write pi mu comma sigma just to represent is the joint prior distribution. Okay, and the base rule that everything going to be what we call joint. So we're going to have a joint posterior. Mathematically, we again use pi, okay, whatever the parameter names, but then now it's conditioning on the data, just like what we did before. We have pi p as the prior, we have the likelihood for the um, p, and then eventually we have p given y as the posterior. Okay? I'm trying to follow the same notation, so everything seems a little bit hopefully more connected. Um, but like I said, Back in the binomial case, we only have one observation, but then for uh, for what we're dealing with right now, we have a sequence of observations, and we made specific assumptions saying that they're IID. Um, so don't forget, don't just write y one one y over here, because you will simply get confused later. Um, it's going to be a sequence of observations that we're working with, which is usually a little bit more realistic in practice. And for example, if you've taken you know, courses about simple linear regression or even just like any kind of regression type of stuff, you have multiple observations and then you have certain models that you assume for them. So this is just, just like one of them, but specifically we're not regressing anything. We're only having one um, outcome variable, which is this Y, and then we're having a IID normal model for it. Okay. Um, so with that, I think as if I start this, we won't be able to end on time, I'm sure. Uh, but on Wednesday, we're gonna pick up from here. And um, what I will also say is, I think, uh, yeah, so later today I will post the, let me stop here, okay. Yeah, so later today I will post the uh, solution, I forgot to do on Wednesday, sorry, uh, for homework one. So you can see, um, well, if you want to check it out before we grade it and return everything and have questions, uh, definitely let me know. And um, I think, um, it seems that most of the team is um, making progress steadily for lab one. So I think we'll still make it due on Wednesday next Wednesday, okay? Like I said, three exercises, uh, all of them about the beta um, stuff. Um, so we try to have one stuff due a week. So tentatively, we try to make it due on Wednesday. So definitely reach out if you have questions. I have an hour later today for office hours, but early next week as well, um, if you need help. But it's group work and I think it's not very complicated. So hopefully you're making uh, steady progress and then Wednesday um, before class will still be an okay due date for, for you. But definitely let me know if otherwise, I'm happy to, to meet uh, individually to, to help answer any kind of questions. Okay, all right, I'm going to stop recording.